Hey, this is Bob here at Serenity Hill. Hopefully, this works better than my last couple tries. Um, I did that long video a few days ago, and at the end of it was supposed to be a, thing, uh, a section on uh, tuck pointing, but uh, my mic wasn't working. And uh, so I tried again with a different mic, and it cut in and out. So I've got my other mic, and um, I made sure it's fully charged. And I'm hoping that this time, let me check. Yeah, I got a green light. I'm hoping that this time it finally comes through, um, so I can show you what we do, what I do for tuck pointing. Now, tuck pointing is something that um, when I first started out, I was not crazy about. I hated tuck pointing. And I think part of the reason why is it was cooler and I would be able to do about three batches of mortar. Uh, what you see here is from one batch. I'd be able to do about three batches of mortar before I had a tuck point. And so it would take a while to tuck point. And uh, it's kind of tedious and it wasn't something I really enjoyed. And, um, and oftentimes, sorry, I'm cleaning some mortar off there. Oftentimes, I just wasn't real happy with the results. Now, I've gotten better, hopefully, as time goes on. When I look at some of my earlier work and I look at some of the what I've been doing here more recently, I think it looks better. But uh, what tuck pointing is for, um, believe it or not, is, you know, this mortar, when you first put it on, it looks, it looks kind of rough. Um, and what tuck pointing does is you compact the mortar, which compacting it gives it more strength, plus you also smooth it, which gives it a better appearance. Um, so what I've been trying to do is learn to like tuck pointing, because it seems like the things you like to do, you do a real good job on. The things you don't like to do, you don't do as good a job on. And I want this to look as nice as possible. So I'm trying to learn to like tuck pointing. And I like it better than I used to. Again, I think a part of the reason why is when it's cooler, I can do two or three batches of mortar and then wait to tuck point all two or three at a time. Now, two or three batches of mortar would get me on this particular wall. Um, a second batch of mortar will get me up to the top of this window. A third would get me up about here. And as you can see, that's, that's a pretty good area to have to do. So, with it being hotter, the mortar wants to start setting up quicker and wants to skin over quicker, and it does, does not have the work time that it does when it's cooler. So, I've been tuck pointing after every batch. Um, it takes a lot less time that way. Uh, so, I think that's part of what helps me like it. I'm not having to do 30 minutes at a time. I'll do about 10 minutes on this side and then I'll go on the other side of the wall and spend about 10 or 12 minutes on that side. So basically your two tuck pointing tools that I'm using, spray bottle and a spoon. Now I spent about, let me check, make sure we're still on. Yep, still on. I spent about 50 or $60, between 50 and $60 at Harbor Freight on a nice set of tuck pointing tools. Now they were for brick and mortar, but I figured, you know, or, you know, for brick and stone, but I figure, you know, what the heck I'm using, uh, I'm using, I'm still using a mortar, but I'm using wood instead of brick. I'm using logs. So, you know, should be the same. So I bought these tools and they got, uh, there must be, uh, I don't know, at least half a dozen tools in the kit and all kinds of different shapes, little trowel, different shapes, flat, curved, um, One's even uh, triangular, um, but and they've got nice wood handles on them and the like. But I, they just weren't, they just weren't working very well because you know, brick especially brick or concrete, you know, everything is straight, everything is flat, everything is straight. It's so much easier. There's nothing straight or flat here. Um, now, when I'm putting the logs in, as you saw before, uh, I'm using. At this point, I'm putting my level at the edge of this wall and at this window because they line up. And then 
I can use that to make sure that I've got things as even as possible on the front here. But even still, it's not like this particular log here. Um, sometimes the way they get cut, they aren't perfectly straight. Like this one, this point right here on the log is flush here. But this point here is probably between an eighth and three sixteenths of an inch in because the log isn't perfectly flat and I'm not going to try to make it perfectly flat. So that's part of the natural materials. You end up with a little variation, but it looks pretty nice. So anyways, all tuck pointing involves, again, I, I spray it down with water. That's one of your big tools, a nice, a good spray bottle. Um, and don't go cheap on the spray bottles. The cheap ones will just frustrate you. This is my second one. I, I had to buy another one because I dropped it and broke the head off. But this is an XR2500 power sprayer from Menards. And it's worked out real well for me so far. So, and then you get it wet. And then basically all you're doing is taking a spoon. That's what I'm using in this case. Like I said, I've got $50, $60 worth of tuck pointing tools. And, um, and I don't use them. I use this 99 cent spoon that I stole out of the set that we bought for the RV. Uh, we've got some nicer ones for the house, but we bought a cheaper set for the RV because we put all our silverware in storage. So anyways, so this is like if I bought it individually, it would be 99 cents. But the thing that's nice about it is, is um, it's got enough of a flat surface to be able to, to get in where I need to cover the bigger areas. But it's also got the nice rounded point on it, which uh, lets me get in close. And then I use the edge a lot. And then sometimes I use the face of it because like right here, I've got a little bit more mortar than I need. So I'll knock that off. And I just put that on the floor. Sometimes what I'll do is, is I may have an area that's a little lower and an area that's a little higher. And you just move the mortar from one place to another. And it's amazing how much the spoon and water bottle moves mortar around. But as you compact it, um, it gives a mortar strength. It also makes it smoother, makes it look prettier. Um, and uh, I used to, like I said, I used to wait and do three, three batches and then I'd tuck point, but I can't do that with the temps being what they are. So I may just stick with this technique because like I said it's it uh, I don't spend near as much time tuck pointing as I would otherwise and uh, it doesn't take as much time and since it doesn't take as much time I think I enjoy it better so and just like a lot of what you're doing with cordwood it's kind of artistic now some people um, you, you look at their books, like if you go to the website, cordwoodconstruction.org, um, it's got some great resources, shows tools, shows techniques. Um, I was hoping to go to one of their classes, but um, the, all the COVID shutdowns hit and all the in-person seminars were canceled. Uh, so I didn't get to do that and I needed to get going, so all I could do was read the book and buy the DVD set off his off the website and uh, and try to learn from that and then you know since there's no one there to critique it you just learn the best you can now one of the things that I do um, and if you're building the cordwood I would encourage you to as well on Facebook there is a group called cordwood construction and it is administered by um, Richard Flatow, and he actually, he admins it, he moderates it, and he actually will respond. If you put a picture of something you're doing up there and ask a question, there's a whole community of people who are, have actually built, or are in the process of building cordwood structures, who will answer your question based on their experience and their knowledge, and, um, so the guy who literally wrote the book and did the DVDs, he'll also answer questions. So 
that's kind of it's kind of nice when the guy who wrote the book will actually answer questions and it's a great uh, a great resource a great community um, I have yet to be flamed by a comment I've yet to get snarky comments or anything like that so which is kind of unusual um, but of course Someone may have put something like that, and Mr. Flatow, he, he, he is, lets it be known he does not, does not condone that. Um, again, it's just what you're doing here is just trying to get it as smooth as possible. Um, one of the, it, and um, make it look as nice as possible. Now, one of the things that you'll find, you look in the books and you look at a lot, the way a lot of people do their houses, is what they do is um, the mortar is inset. The ends of a log stick out, or what they call proud. Um, you'll notice mine aren't that way. Um, my mortar beads are, for the most part, depending upon how flat the wood is. Um, like I said, not, not all the cuts were straight. Some of, them, some of them have a nice flat face, and some of them are, you know not flat but at any rate so some uh, some people inset their mortar bead um, so the ends are proud uh, ends of the logs are proud they're sticking out and um, on my first wall I did some with the with the ends of the logs proud and I did some with it uh, flush and um, I had Deb take a look at it. We stood back, took a look at it, and I asked her which she liked better, and she liked the part with it flush better. So, um, since that's what she likes better, and, and personally, I kind of liked it better, that's what we do. And that's the beauty of doing this. You know, when you go and you buy a house in the suburbs or you buy something that's already built, unless you're, you know, you get whatever their vision of whatever their idea was whatever their talent level was and um, and that's what you get uh, it's what somebody else had a vision for and what somebody else made but when you're doing a cordwood home on your own you can make it what you want you can do with it what you want and we like we like the look of the mortar more flush with the ends of the logs um, it gives us a sm little bit smoother looking wall, um, and that's what we like, so that's what we're doing. And somebody else may say, well, that's not right, you can't do it that way. Well, I haven't found anything that tells me that one way or the other makes a structural difference, okay? Now, if it made a structural difference, that would be another issue, I would say. You have to do it this way because... It's a structural concern, but again, you know, this cordwood is infill. Okay, it's not, it's not supporting anything except itself. Um, the bottom of this window here is not even supported by the cordwood. This window is got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's got eight uh, four-inch-long screws in it. No, five inch long, five inch long screws. So the screws go through an inch and a half through here and three and a half inches into that uh, timber. And there's eight of them. And then there's a support underneath this. At the center of a window, there's a support that goes down and is nailed to the floor. So this window box is not supported by the cordwood. It's supported by that timber and by a brace that goes down to the floor, which rests on, on beams that are between the timbers. So it's supported by the, by the timbers, not by the cordwood. Um, so, and even when it goes up here to the top, there'll be a bead of mortar between and against the, the, the uh, beams up at the top. But the cordwood does not bear any of that load from the roof or anything. So it's just, it's just carrying the weight of the cordwood above it is all it's carrying. So um, 
I said we like the smooth. It's not load bearing. It's not a structural issue. Um, I like. I haven't found anything that tells me one's superior to the other. It's just, I guess, you know, we've always when you go see a a, a brick or concrete building, the the mortar is always inset uh, slightly. Um, instead of being flush with the brick or flush with the mortar. Um, but we're doing it the way we like, which is what you can do because it's your place. Okay, I'm almost finished here. This is the, the, the part where I try to be a little fiddly is where I'm joining today's work with yesterday's work and try to feather that in so that once it all dries and sets up, you won't be able to tell where one day's work was and the next day was because it's all joined together. Now, when I get finished with this, I've been remiss in it at, at some on some days, but when I get finished with this, what you need to do once you finish for the day, or even if you're going to be gone, if, you know, if you're going to take a long lunch, or you got to go run and get some parts or whatever, uh, take a tarp, take some plastic and cover your cordwood um, so that you don't lose too much moisture from the mortar because you want it to dry to set up slowly so that you don't get cracks and uh, and to get the most strength because um, I think a, an eight foot tall cordwood wall it's not lightweight okay um, an eight foot tall cordwood wall weighs approximately 500 pounds per linear foot. This is an eight foot wall. It's actually uh, right here at the center. It's about 10 foot tall uh, at this end. And it's over 11 foot tall at the other end of the wall. So this one will actually probably be closer to 600 uh, pounds per linear foot. So every about like that of this wall, that's 500 pounds of weight. So it does have some, some weight to support. So you want your mortar to dry, to, to dry slowly, cure well, so that it can support its weight and so that it doesn't crack. And again, I take some care to try to blend yesterday, today's work into yesterday's so it's not glaringly obvious where, one, where I stopped from day to day, other than the fact there's a difference in the color of the mortar and uh, if I do a wide shot you can see it's white down at the bottom and then it's increasingly gr darker gray as you go up um, and until today's work and you see how gray this is and it's going to believe it or not it's going to dry such a light gray it'll be white all right well that's it I'm done with uh, tuck pointing this side now I have to go back go out and climb the ladder um, and do the other side and this one will be done and I probably will go ahead and make up another batch of mortar and get this wall up to the top of the window and uh, then tomorrow tomorrow or Friday or Saturday in the next couple days I'll be putting my bracing up on this window to support it from the top so that the top of this window doesn't carry all that weight from the cordwood, keep it from sagging. So I'll show you what I dreamed up there and uh, look forward to seeing if you guys have any comments on that. If you're doing a cordwood building, uh, hook up with uh, either Rob Roy, he has a nice website, and then Richard Flatow has his website, uh, cordwoodconstruction.org. On Facebook, there's uh, the Cordwood Construction Group, which really is a, a big resource, very helpful. Um, and it's kind of nice to be able to put a picture up there or ask a question and have the guy who wrote the book actually answer you. Um, it's, it's, that's an excellent resource and something I'm glad I've got. All right, I got to get on the outside here. So I will see you on the next one. Thanks for stopping by. I just noticed the spot I didn't do very well. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed.
Don't be afraid to get out there and do something you've never done before. You might learn something and you might just like it. See you later.